episode 50. He never knew how long he was in the creature's clutches. He only knew that the darkness suddenly lifted enough for him to see that the leaf-strewn ground was now swarming with spiders. Craning his neck sideways, he realized that they had reached the ridge of a vast hollow, a hollow that had been cleared of trees so that the stars shone brightly onto the worst scene he had ever laid eyes on. Spiders. Not tiny spiders like those surging over the leaves below. Spiders the size of cart horses, eight-eyed, eight-legged, black, hairy, gigantic. The massive specimen that was carrying Harry made its way down the steep slope toward a misty, domed web in the very center of the hollow, while its fellows closed in all around it, clicking their pincers excitedly at the sight of its load. Harry fell to the ground on all fours as the spider released him. Ron and Fang thudded down next to him. Fang wasn't howling any more, but cowering silently on the spot. Ron looked exactly like Harry felt. His mouth was stretched wide in a kind of silent scream, and his eyes were popping. Harry suddenly realized that the spider that he had dropped him was saying something. It had been hard to tell because he clicked his pincers with every word he spoke. Aragog, it called. Aragog. And from the middle of the misty, domed web, a spider the size of a small elephant emerged very slowly. There was gray in the black of his body and legs, and each of the eyes on his ugly, pincered head was milky white. He was blind. What is it? he said, clicking his pincers rapidly. Men, clicked the spider, who had caught Harry. Is it Hagrid, said Aragog, moving closer, his eight milky eyes wandering vaguely. Strangers, clicked the spider, who had brought Ron. Kill them, clicked Aragog fretfully. I was sleeping. We're friends of Agrid's, Harry shouted. His heart seemed to have left his chest to pound in his throat. <coughs> Went the pincers of all the spiders all around the hollow. Aragog paused. Agrid has never sent men into our hollow before, he said slowly. Hagrid's in trouble, said Harry, breathing very fast. That's why we've come. In trouble, said the aged spider. And Harry thought he heard concern beneath his clicking pincers. But why has he sent you? Harry thought of getting to his feet, but decided against it. He didn't think his legs would support him. So he spoke from the ground as calmly as he could. They think up at the school that Hagrid's been setting up something on students. They've taken him to Azkaban. Aragog clicked his pincers furiously. And all around the hollow, the sound was echoed by the crowd of spiders. It was like applause, except applause didn't usually make Harry feel sick with fear. But that was years ago, said Aragog fretfully. Years and years ago. I remember it well. That's why they made him leave the school. They believe that I was the monster that dwells in what they call the Chamber of Secrets. They thought that Hagrid had opened the chamber and set me free. And you... You didn't come from the Chamber of Secrets, said Harry, who could feel cold sweat on his forehead. I, said Aragog, clicking angrily, I was not born in the castle. I come from a distant land. A traveler gave me to Hagrid when I was an egg. 
Hagrid was only a boy, but he cared for me, hidden in a cupboard in the castle, feeding me on scraps from the table. Hagrid is my good friend and a good man. When I was discovered and blamed for the death of a girl, he protected me. I have lived here in the forest ever since, where Hagrid still visits me. He even found me a wife, Mozag. And you see how our family has grown, all through Hagrid's goodness. Harry summoned what remained of his courage. So you never, never attacked anyone. Never, croaked the old spider. It would have been my instinct, but out of respect for Hagrid, I never harmed a human. The body of the girl who was killed was discovered in a bathroom. I never saw any part of the castle but the cupboard in which I grew up. Our kind like the dark and the quiet. But then, do you know what did kill that girl, said Harry? Because whatever it is, it's back and it's attacking people again. His words were drowned by a loud outbreak of clicking and the rustling of many long legs shifting angrily. Large black shapes shifted all around him. The thing that lives in the castle, said Aragog, is an ancient creature we spiders fear above all others. Well do I remember how I pleaded with Agra to let me go when I sensed the beast moving about the school. What is it? said Harry urgently. More loud clicking, more rustling. The spiders seem to be closing in. We do not speak of it, said Aragog fiercely. We do not name it. I never even told Agrid the name of that dread creature, though he asked me many times. Harry didn't want to press the subject, not with the spiders pressing closer on all sides. Aragog seemed to be tired of talking. He was backing slowly into his domed web, but his fellow spiders continued to inch slowly toward Harry and Ron. We'll just go then, Harry called desperately to Aragog, hearing leaves rustling behind him. Go, said Aragog slowly. I think not. But, but, My sons and daughters do not harm Hagrid on my command, but I cannot deny them fresh meat when it wanders so willingly into our midst. Goodbye, friend of Hagrid. Harry spun around. Feet away, towering above him was a solid wall of spiders clicking their many eyes gleaming in their ugly black heads. Even as he reached for his wand, Harry knew it was no good. There were too many of them. But as he tried to stand, ready to die fighting, a loud, long note sounded and a blaze of light flamed through the hollow. Mr. Weasley's car was thundering down the slope, headlights glaring, its horn screeching, knocking spiders aside. Several were thrown onto their backs, their endless legs waving in the air. The car screeched to a halt in front of Harry and Ron, and the doors flew open. Get Fang! Harry yelled, diving into the front seat. Ron seized the boar hand around the middle and threw him, yelping, into the back of the car. The doors slammed shut. Ron didn't touch the accelerator, but the car didn't need him. The engine roared and they were off, hitting more spiders. They sped up the slope, out of the hollow, and they were soon crashing through the forest, branches whipping the windows as the car wound its way cleverly through the widest gaps following a path it obviously knew. Harry looked sideways at Ron. His mouth was still open in the silent scream, but his eyes weren't popping anymore. Are you okay? Ron stared straight ahead, unable to speak. 
They smashed their way through the undergrowth, Fang howling loudly in the back seat, and Harry saw the side mirrors snap off as they squeezed past a large oak. After ten noisy, rocky minutes, the trees thinned, and Harry could again see patches of sky. The car stopped so suddenly that they were nearly thrown into the windshield. They had reached the edge of the forest. Fang flung himself at the window in his anxiety to get out, and when Harry opened the door, he shot off through the trees to Hagrid's house, tail between his legs. Harry got out, too, and after a minute or so, Ron seemed to regain the feeling in his limbs and followed, still stiff-necked and staring. Harry gave the car a grateful pat as it reversed back into the forest and disappeared from view.